the second speaker, uh, Dr. Uh, Pong Kwan uh, from the Tamaset University. Uh, she is going to uh, talk on Thailand engagement with Myanmar. Does economic interest prevail? Uh, may I request uh, Dr. Pong Kwan uh, to make your presentation? Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me here. Um, my presentation will be on Thailand's engagement with Myanmar, which um, we can see that it's fluctuated. It has fluctuated a lot through different, um, through several decades. So here is the summary of the past formal modern day relations between Thailand and Myanmar. So I put like the signals at the end of each sentence to show the fluctuations of Thailand and Myanmar's relation. Um, so we start off with quite a good relationship um, after the independence of Myanmar in 19, um, 1950s, we had established a relationship, a formal relationship, of official relationship between the two countries. And that has been on a good track with UNUs visiting Thailand, um, having relationship with the monarchy in Thailand, and we had the monarchs visiting Myanmar in returns. So, however, uh, we see we can see the fluctuations in between. Sometimes it's going up; the relationship is going, um, it's 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 better. Sometimes it's going down. It's um, some, something obstructs the relationship between the two countries. Um, however, we can see that after um, the democratic transition, the political transition in Myanmar, the relationship between the two countries have been on a good mode. But um, before I go on to the re details of the relationship between Thailand and Myanmar nowadays, I want to point out to the factors that influence Thailand's foreign policy towards Myanmar. That actually um, factors into the fluctuations of the re relationship between the two countries. Um, the direct factors that I can point out here is the first thing, the great powers foreign policy towards Myanmar and international politics. Thailand is a very small country. Um, sometimes we have to play our bandwagon to bigger countries, especially during the Cold War. We had a very um, firm stance that we support the, um, the United States side and we tries to, um, so, so we, we, we had a very firm stance during the Cold War, and that actually factored in a decreasing um, relationship between uh, Thailand, deteriorating um, relationship between Thailand and Myanmar, because we saw Myanmar as a potential um, communist country that could um, uh, give a domino effect into Thailand, and during that time, because of the Western country's stance against Myanmar and against communist countries, well, we decided to support ethnic minorities' army along the border, and that actually angered the Burmese, um, the Myanmar government. So that one showed you that Western countries' um, politics and foreign policy towards Myanmar actually affected Thailand's um, foreign policy towards Myanmar as well, to some certain extent. The influence of Western countries um, into Thailand's foreign policy towards Myanmar start decreasing after the end of the Cold War. Doesn't mean it's totally eliminated. It's decreasing, but we still follow Western stance to some certain extent. And that actually relies on the second um, on the second factor, which is domestic politics and actors involved in the policy process. There are basically three groups that um, switchingly govern Thailand. The first is the army, the military after the coup d'etat, the army will take over and run the country. This is um, the situation we are in right now, and this is not the first time because we have gone through this process all along. The second group that has governed um, Thailand is the bureaucrat government. So basically the government that relies heavily on bureaucratic processes and bureaucrats. So these people 
usually are Western um, educated. They follow the Western stance. They don't really, sometimes do not really have a strong presence in Thailand. They don't really deliver, not necessarily deliver well on Thai people. They have to gain legitimacy though by accepting the Western stance because normally during this bureaucrat governments, the economic performance of Thai of Thailand is not that great. So the only way to um, to gain legitimacy in the um, in the in the international politics is to accept the Western stance and follow whatever the Western countries and the great majors powers policies towards um, Myanmar is. So that actually showed you um, Thailand's policy towards Myanmar sometime a little after 1988 incidents and also some, some sometimes after 2007 incidents that Thai, Thai government shifted the stance of engaging with Myanmar to blocking the trade and having a very strong stance commenting on um, democracy, development, human rights issues in Burma. That is because Thai, the Thai government also needs to seek global legitimacy by doing something else instead of um, increasing or improving economic performance. So the third group that has governed Thailand in the past, well, decades, um, has been the government that is dominated by business groups. And these governments tend to care more about business opportunities inside Burma, um, inside Myanmar. And with these government governing Thailand, um, ties between Burma, uh, Myanmar and Thailand tend to be on a good terms. Basically because the business has pushed forward their um, presence in Myanmar going forward and investing and improving infrastructure in Myanmar. So those are direct factors influencing Thailand's um, foreign policy towards Myanmar. There is one indirect um, factor that influenced Thailand's and foreign, foreign policy towards Myanmar though, which is the Thai's attitude towards Myanmar and its people. Um, it is very funny that uh, mostly Thai's attitude towards Myanmar is pretty negative. Um, on the other side, uh, from the study I have um, I have done before and researched before, it showed that the Burmese and Myanmar people's attitude toward Thais are on the other side. They don't have a very negative attitude towards Thais, though. It's just because this attitude has been presented through movies, dramas, series, books, and several media that showed a very bad behavior of Myanmar. And because of the historical, well, historiography of Thai histories and historians in the past that try to show that Myanmar tried to um, capture Thailand um, uh, in the past, like hundreds of years ago, uh, which actually factored in how people, Thai people views Myanmar nowadays. But I would see, I, I would come to a conclusion at the end if this indirect factor of Thai's attitude towards Myanmar actually factor in any Thailand's foreign policy towards Myanmar. So here is the Thailand foreign policy towards Myanmar since Myanmar's democratic transition. I'm not going to go that far back before that, so I would like to start um, since 2010 after the political transition happened in Myanmar. So, uh, as I said before, before Yingla government, um, Thailand's engage, um, Thailand's policy towards Myanmar is pretty negative. Not because um, the 2000, one thing was because of the 2007 accident, the sovereign revolution in Myanmar, uh, and Surin Pitsuan, the ASEAN um, secretariat at that time, came up with this flexible engagement, which opened a way for ASEAN countries, including Thailand, to push very strong stance on um, commenting on um, human rights and political issues in Myanmar. That resulted in the closing of the Massa trading post, the biggest trading post between Myanmar and Thailand. Um, when Ying La government came into power, she reopened the Massa trading post again, and we see that we saw the rise of trading, um, of trades between Thailand and Myanmar after that time. Um, another thing that was done during her term was the Dawei 
project. And um, she also had a lot of policies towards Myanmar, basically um, tailoring into business opportunities and business interest that Thai um, investors could go in and invest in Myanmar. The, um, two of those are construction of connecting highways from Thak, um, the, the western province of Thailand, to Malam Yang and Three Pagodas Pass to Malam Yang. That was that were those were the two highways that were planned during under the Yingla government. Um, the last one was the plan to open special economic zones along the Thai borders. These covered um, several borders, though not only border with Myanmar but border with other neighboring countries as well. But the only um, special economic zone that was done until, up until now was. Um, the special economic zone at Masat, bordering with Miawadi in Myanmar. Uh, and that saw a very great opportunity for investors of both countries to um, invest, um, do the cross-border investment. So here is the, the way project. During the, so under the Yingla government, um, Thailand, um, this Thai company had award, uh, was awarded a full concession, Italian Thai development. Um, it came to a halt because it could not accumulate a, um, sufficient fund to fund the project. So in 2012, 2012, the Thai government took over the project. So say no more, um, no more private investment into this program. The Thai government would fully go in, cooperate with the Myanmar government, and improve and develop this project. It didn't go well because Thailand could not attract investors as well. But um, under this current military government, the junta, we saw a way forward for this um, project. So these are the connecting highways I, I told you earlier. Uh, it has been established though, these two highways. The problem was that it's still one way. Um, road, one-way street. So mean, meaning that today you allow like the road, um, the, the, the cars to go to Ma Lam Yang the other day, you allow the car to go to Thailand's border. So it's switchingly this way. They are building, they are expanding the roads so that they could have a two-track, two-way two um, transportation um, between the two countries. So these are, this is the special economic zones I was I was talking about the Yingla government launched a study group to study the potentials of the border towns who can be a special economic zone. But the most tangible plan was Massa Special Economic Zone, which right now saw a lot of progress that the Thai investors already um, went in Myanmar and invest along the road that would go from Massa to Malam Yang, and that um, and they saw a great potential of. Um, having Myanmar as another destination of tourism from Thailand to Myanmar. All right, so come to the current situation under Prayut's government. So I, I should mention this earlier because uh, Prayut government is a, a junta, military. So it has a good relationship with the current, with her current Myanmar government because of the, of the um, individual personal relationship when they were in the armies together. Uh, so basically they try to push forward a lot of good policies, engagement policies with Myanmar. Um, and also because you might not think about this, but uh, Thai army has a lot of economic interest in Myanmar since the past because um, the army was awarded concession of logging and other kind of natural resources in the past, even during the, the Cold War. So they tried, they developed a very close ties together and that factored in a, a, very, a very tight, a very um, nice relationship between both parties. Uh, you may think that because economic actually dominate Thailand's foreign policy towards Myanmar right now, doesn't go to another kind of foreign policies towards Myanmar, it does though. So on the economic side, um, the, 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 the current government of Thailand resumed the Dawei project, pushing for more, economic, um, more special economic zones, and also gave a lot of aids 
to Myanmar as well. I mean, like, Thailand is not a rich country. It still tried to build a very good a forum relationship with neighboring countries. Um, and it gave infrastructure aid to Myanmar in a total amount of 6 billion baht last year. Uh, basically, those go to the study of potentials of developing country, develop, developing towns, roads, and basic infrastructure in Myanmar. We also have a political policy towards Myanmar as well, and that is, a, that is to allow Myanmar's ethnic minority to hold a meeting in Thailand, especially in the north. Um, this does not go to the government, uh, does not go against the government of Myanmar though, because Thailand allowed this to happen because they want to support the peace prof process happening in Myanmar right now. They believe that when the peace process has ended and successfully ended, that will bring peace to the country and that definitely going to benefit investors along the border. So basically, we have a lot of policies that does not directly address the issue of economy, but still, at the end of the day, benefit economic interest of the, Thailand, of the Thai investors and in Thailand in Myanmar. Those are, um, so earlier was, um, were our, our policies initiated by the government put priority, prioritized by the government. We still have a number of policies initiated and support and, 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 and implemented by supporting, um, supporting agencies. We have this Thailand International Cooperation Agency, TAICA. Well, this is very ironic because um, these agencies have done some of the projects in neighboring countries, but these agencies were not, are not known inside the countries. I mean, I wouldn't know these agencies until I do some research about it because it has not been presented, it has not been advertised at all. So Taika has done some academy cooperation with um, Myanmar, for example, hos building hospitals in Myanmar, improving um, hospital healthcare issues, do some skills training for laborers in Myanmar. So this might see as an, um, a social issue, social policies. At the end of the day, when you build hospitals and improve health healthcare situation in Myanmar, that factor in an, a better health and more productive laborers. So at the end of the day, this actually is not directly about social or any political issues or benefits. Everything tailors in into economic benefits of Thailand's going to Myanmar, invest, and probably take advantage of a lower wage laborers in Myanmar. Also, they do some skills training for labor that will definitely answer the question of having factories from Thailand moving to Myanmar and invest there to avoid a higher um, wage in Thailand right now. Also, we also have these neighboring countries, economic development, NIDA, financial, um, that support, gives financial aid, economic cooperation, doing some research and study, especially those potentials, do some research about potentials of development in Myanmar. This agency is responsible for that. The business sector, especially those business along the border, also do a lot to improve um, skills of the labor across along the border because they have they have to um, employ these laborers Myanmar um, in, into their businesses. All right. So the status of the Way project, I told you earlier that it was it was stopped because of the lack of funding. Right now, just this month, the Japanese government already agreed to take part in the project. Um, the J Japan invested in the special person a vehicle and committed to draft another development blueprint. Now we already have a development blueprint, but when the Japanese government joined into the project, um, they wanted to, to write another draft to probably improve the development of the project and make it more transparent. Transparent. What they are going to do is that they are going to compare two blueprints together and select one. And this process might take up to four or five months, so it will delay the continuation of the project, but not. Can I remind you, we have only one minute. All right, I will wrap up. So this is the expansion of special economic zones I was talking 
uh, where it's talking about. So now we have a, a special economic zone coming up um, and Chiang Rai, Kanchanaburi. So more economic zones that will link up to Myan Myanmar cities a, a, across the border. As challenges, um, we see a good intention, goodwill from both governments to improve ties and developing, um, develop infrastructure to benefit both countries. What we have both on, um, on both sides is limited cap capabilities. Um, Myanmar, the limited capabilities from Myanmar side has shown through this inability to do the um, approvement of nationalities of Myanmar labor going to Thailand. It takes a very long time to do that, and that delays the process of register um, migrant labor in Thailand. Um, we also have policy discontinuity. Um, and also neg um, negative attitude of Thai people towards Myanmar. I would say at the end, I don't think it will tailor in any Thailand's foreign policy towards Myanmar. So although it might obstruct a little bit, but it would not affect it because everything happened at the top level. And what happened on the ground on the BM, um, Thailand side, the perception of, of people would not really really affected because all the agencies come to an agreement that economic opportunities stand in Myanmar. So at the end of the day, I believe that um, this, this ties between Thailand and Myanmar will go on and will push a priority on economic side. And that is my conclusion. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pong Wen, for your inspiring speech on <clears throat> Thai Myanmar relationship. Uh, yes, uh, Thai and Myanmar are the very uh, good neighbor, and the unfortunately Myanmar joined the ASEAN after 30 years. The ASEAN was founded, uh, and but uh, Myanmar and Thai have uh, enjoyed very uh, long-standing friendship, and Myanmar and Thai have to play a complementary role uh, to make the the AEC successful, uh, uh, which will uh, benefit a lot for the rest of the, our neighbor. Thank you very much indeed.